Welcome back to your weekly trip into tomorrow. I'm Chris Graveline. Dave is out this week, recovering from a bout with kidney stones. He's doing well and sends his sincere thanks to all of our social media followers for their well wishes and kind words. Don't forget our cool Into Tomorrow Hot Summer Giveaway is in full swing. All you have to do to win one of our many cool prizes is participate on our radio show by either calling our Ask Dave hotline to ask us any tech question, provide a tip for our listeners, share your favorite app with us, or even get some tech rage off your chest. You can call us anytime, 24-7, at 1-800-899-INTO. That's 800-899-4686. Or you can use our free Into Tomorrow app available on many mobile devices and select the audio option to send us an audio question. Participate today and win. I'll have our peek into yesterday coming up with This Week in Tech History, but first, fitness trackers have been gaining a lot of popularity these days. We've had a couple of the more popular ones and Samantha and Michael have been playing with them. They're here now to share their thoughts on the Fitbit Flex and the Fitbug Orb. Set a goal and go. I tried out the Fitbit Flex. The Flex allows you to set a goal on the iOS app that you download from the App Store. It uses LED lights to show you how far along you are with meeting your daily goal. Each light represents 20% of your goal. You can choose which category you want to track, your steps, calories, or distance. It lights up like a scoreboard challenging you to be more active day after day. The Flex tracks your steps taken, calories burned, distance you have traveled, active minutes, the hours you have slept, and the quality of your sleep. If you're sleeping with Chris, maybe, mm, might not be that great of quality. Hey! Just kidding. When you first set up your Fitbit, you enter your starting weight and height, and if you have a weight loss goal, you're going to enter what it is. Fitbit uses their leading edge accelerometer. It bases its calculation like calories burned on your personal profile, reflecting your stats and not the average Joe's. That's kind of neat. Now, it's recommended that each person walk 10,000 steps a day. Michael, do you walk 10,000 steps a day? No. Great. Well, we try to, and it's not as easy as it seems. We recently spent a few days in Disney World, and the Grave Lines like to hit the parks from sun up to sun down, and we only averaged about 12,000 steps a day. So you can imagine how hard it is, so you need to keep moving. Also, you can enter the calories you've consumed during the day and it'll let you know how many steps or active movements you've had to reach your daily goal. You also track your water intake. It's recommended that you drink 8 to 10 8 ounce glasses of water a day. Do you drink 8 to 10 glasses a day? No. And adding vodka to it? That doesn't count. Really? No. Sorry. The Fitbit Flex gets you social. You can link it to your contacts through the registered email and you can become friends. They have to send you a request and you have to accept. But if you do link up, you can encourage and cheer each other on. You can find the Fitbit Flex at a retailer near you and it runs for approximately $99. Michael, what did you check out? I've been checking out the Orb by Fitbug that tracks my movements 24-7, like your Fitbit. It also tracks my sleep patterns, which it really didn't track. There used to be a monthly service charge for the Fitbug service, but they eliminated that a while back. The Fitbug Orb is removable and can transfer from wristband belt clip and lanyard holders, making it easier depending upon your type of movement for the day and while you're sleeping. I recommend the wristband as it's been my favorite. Do you have those options, Samantha? Yes, so I did the Flex. Now, the Fitbit comes in many different options. So it's not just the wristband, there is just like the Fitbug, there's one that looks just like yours, there's also one that you wear on your waist. So there are many different options. Oh, okay, cool. With mine, there's no actual screen on the device that displays the steps, so you're relying on your iPhone, iPad, or Android phone to see your progress throughout the day. And to be honest, most people see it as a tiny watch. The Fitbug syncing was another thing I wasn't a big fan of, because with the ease of an Apple device, it would sync automatically. But for those of you with an Android device, you need to double tap the button on your Fitbug to upload your steps periodically to update the amount of steps that you've taken. The fact that I had to double tap to upload my information every so often didn't seem accurate to me. So it tracks the calories that you burn and your steps throughout the day. But it also divides it up into acrobatic steps and your energy levels that have never even moved when I've used it. They were always at zero, no matter how many steps or how active I was or how fast I ran. The fact that I couldn't find any way to keep a log of what I did wasn't possible. Another feature I wasn't too fond of was that it has a watch battery. 
so when you're on the go and reach your destination and you can't just recharge it, you have to change the whole battery. But it's very simple to do. I found my Fitbug for about $50 online. Well, there are, like I said, some different versions of the Fitbit that do range um, in that price range and even a little bit below. Hmm. I don't believe that they use watch batteries. <laughs> they all are rechargeable, so it hooks into a charging device that plugs into a USB. So it's oh. very convenient. It's very neat. I can show you. You take your Fitbit off and you pop out the little piece, you stick it in your USB and that's how it charges. So it's a really neat um, system and it's obviously really easy and portable. Oh. Well, that's cool. Mine is just one of these simple little watch battery backs. So just remove it from the back there and it comes off. So, I mean, it, I don't know though. I don't know if I really wanna spend the money on batteries all the time or, you know, be in the middle of my day and my battery dies and then I'm not tracking my fitness anymore. Well, I can tell you the Fitbit has been a lot of fun and a great conversation piece. So I'm in sales and when I wear my Fitbit, it seems that everybody kind of knows what it is and so many people, you'll see them in their suits, have their Fitbits. So if anything, hey, it might be a great conversation piece. But at $99, I think it's really great. It tracks your steps, it keeps you up. Um, I've been able to link to a lot of clients and friends, so it's kind of fun on the social aspect. Cool. Cheer everybody on and my next item is gonna be to get Chris one and let's get him moving. <laughs> Thinking about mine and yours, you know, mine is a lower end, so I guess it's worth the money for what I'm getting for it. You know, it's basically just tracking my steps and that's simply really all I really care to know. In my opinion, $50 for pedometer, mm, maybe not so much. $99 for a pedometer, calorie tracker, social networking item, and to really help you get a jump start on a diet, I think it's worth it. It's an investment. So we hope you check out either product. You can go on the website at intotomorrow.com and we'll link you to the appropriate websites where you can find each product. If you do, give us a call and let us know which product you choose what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, and if anything, try to find us through email and maybe link up and be our friend. Till next time, this is Samantha Graveline. I'm Michael Fisk. From Into Tomorrow. Do you use a fitness tracker in your everyday life? Has it helped you reach any of your goals? Share your thoughts with us by leaving your comment below or calling us anytime. If you don't yet subscribe to our weekly tech newsletter, you should. Each week we bring you interesting tech news stories, links to our show pages, our guests' websites, and more. We even include some hmm thoughts to make you smile. It's free and all you have to do is stop by our main page at intotomorrow.com and enter your email address only in the red box. You'll get an email to make sure you want to receive it, click that confirmation link and voila, you'll have Into Tomorrow in your inbox once a week. And we promise never to share your email address with anyone. It's time now to strap ourselves into our tech time machine and head into yesterday with a look back at some of the milestones in the tech world. First up, in 1876 this week, Thomas Edison of Menlo Park, New Jersey, patented the mimeograph machine. He described it as a method for preparing autographic stencils for printing. They have been since replaced by paper copiers and computers. In 1944, IBM dedicated the first program-controlled calculator, the Automatic Sequence Controlled Calculator better known as the Harvard Mark I. In 1977 this week, Tandy Corporation announced the TRS-80, one of the world's first mass-produced personal computers. And this week in 2007, NASA's Phoenix spaceship was launched. Mission scientists use instruments aboard the lander to search for environments suitable for microbial life on Mars and to research the history of water there. That's our look back at This Week in Tech History, brought to you by Eva Berlin the global innovation show for consumer electronics and home appliances. Get more info at ifa-berlin.com. Remember, we've got an ongoing Support Our Troops campaign. There are still many of our men and women in uniform all over the world, some in harm's way, working every day to keep us safe. Stop by our site at intotomorrow.com and scroll to the bottom of the main page. Click the Support Our Troops banner and that'll take you to a page that lists many ways you can say thanks and show your support for the hardworking members of our military. Well, that wraps it up for this week's ITTV update. Don't forget to tune into our three-hour radio show and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss an update. I'm Chris Graveline. We'll see you right here next week.
upload your steps periodically. What?